What's up, everyone? My name is Alan, founder and consultant at Fortnite Marketing, and welcome to Braze for Technical Marketers. Today, we're going to talk about how to create a Braze catalog. And about a few months ago, maybe maybe a year ago at this point, let's actually see. Um, yes, one year ago, we did make a video called Braze Demo Catalogs and Selections Part 1. And we apologize for leaving so many members hanging, waiting for Part 2. And we are happy to share that this is finally part two, uh, but this time we, uh, we do plan on covering a lot more breadth and depth of the feature Braze catalogs. So stay tuned for more. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions or leave any comments and enjoy the rest of this video. So before we jump in, what exactly is a Braze catalog? Um, so first of all, we think that the Braze catalog is one of the most helpful features uh, that Braze has released in the recent years. Catalogs almost serves as your own internal Braze database for you to store information, store data, and use that information to either trigger or um, personalize your messages. Um, and even though catalogs, we believe, was originally created for mostly retail and e-commerce, uh, maybe entertainment, any products or brands that actually have a physical catalog or a service catalog to offer, uh, we see teams use it for localization and all sorts of, you know, hacky, clever, intelligent ways. So it has a lot of different use cases. Uh, we also see teams powering recurring newsletters with catalog information. So we can, catalogs can really help streamline a lot of your Braze efforts. One thing to note is that catalogs do heavily rely on Liquid. So we will go over um, what the liquid syntax looks like, especially using catalogs. And it definitely helps to have some liquid knowledge. Um, but no worries if you're not familiar with liquid, we will try our best to go over as much as you need to know. So we, before we jump into what it looks like to create a catalog, let's actually go over some context in the email that we plan on using this catalog for. So here we have type uh, somewhat of a retail welcome email. You know, welcome, maybe you just signed up for this uh retail brands, you know, membership or account. Here's like a 15% welcome coupon. And then if you scroll down, we have a people's favorite section. And this is the module, the email module that we plan on powering using our catalog. So when I look at this module, I see image links. I see maybe a category name, a product name, the starting price, and then maybe the link to the item. So those are the columns that we'll have in our catalog. Um, and as we populate this, we might have multiple rows and depending on the user and their attributes, uh, you know, the information that they shared when they sign up, we could possibly use different rows in the catalog to populate, you know, different types of people's favorites that might best relate to the user. So here we are on the creating a catalog documentation page. Let's go through this and then let's also build our first catalog together. So first creating a catalog involves importing a CSV file of non-user data. That's one thing important to note that catalogs are non-user data. It's general data, it's product. And this allows you to then access that information to enrich your messages. You can bring in any type of data into a catalog. This data is typically some sort of metadata from your company, such as product information for an e-commerce business or course information for an education provider. So think of the products that you're selling at your brand, the catalog lists all the things that you're offering. This page covers how to prepare and upload a CSV file to create a catalog, how to manage catalogs, and more. So here are some common use cases, product services, food, upcoming events, music packages, all super great use cases, um, use cases that we've helped with. And then you can begin accessing messages in a similar way to accessing custom attributes or custom event properties through Liquid. Before creating a catalog, be sure to have your CSV file ready. Um, and CSV truly is the easiest way to go about it. Braze does offer some UI to create the catalog in the dashboard. So if you navigate to data settings, catalogs, and if let's say we create a new catalog, ooh, um, there's some settings here. Uh, so I got distracted by the red exclamation point, but create new catalog. And there is a create in browser, which is actually not bad. Um, but for this video, let's talk about the CSV route. And one thing to keep in mind is that the CSV, or sorry, the catalog uh, usage does have a limitation. There is a cap to it. Um, for most teams, 100 megabytes of data is more than enough. But, you know, there are brands in, in industries where they need hundreds of thousands of rows of data. 
And for those teams, I have seen them uh, require more than 100, 100 megabytes. For most teams, this is more than enough. Let's check out the CSV file guidelines, which is where it starts to get helpful. So note these guidelines when creating your CSV file. The first column of the CSV file must be a header of ID, and that's lowercase ID, and that matters. And each item's ID must be unique, meaning you cannot have two items with the exact same ID. Usually an ID or an identifier is a unique thing. Um, so that's usually the case for a lot of things that you can't have more than one person or profile have the same ID. That's the same thing for catalog rows. All other column names must be unique. Once again, also a pretty general, similar rule. Additionally, the following limitations apply to catalog CSV files. Uh, thousand fields, that's a lot, should be more than enough. Maximum field name of 250 characters. 100 megabytes for all CSV files combined across your company. So for your entire company's dashboard, you have 100 megabytes um, of space. And I believe that includes multiple workspaces too. So for your entire company's dashboard, regardless of what workspace you're in. Maximum CSV file size of two gigabytes. This is if you upgrade it to the pro. Uh, field value of 5,000 characters. And only letters, numbers, hyphens, and underscores for ID and header values, meaning you cannot be using special characters. Um, and this also is a common place of error. So only the things you might normally see in like an ID format, numbers, letters, hyphens, and underscores. We also recommend formatting all text in your CSV files as lowercase. Make sure you're encoding your CSV file using this format. Okay, that's helpful. Another helpful tip. Awesome. So at this point, we've covered uh, most of what we need to know to get started. So let's actually open up a Google Sheets, sheets.new. And as Braze instructed, our very first column will be ID, and that's it. Now let's actually go ahead and name this uh, Braze, our uh, FNM, Braze Catalog. Typically, products have a uh, pretty lengthy and unique ID, so we will try our best to create um, an ID structure that's unique. So for the first item, let's call it ABC123. And then for the second item, let's call it ABC456. And 123 will be the product on the left. 456 will be the product on the right. And the columns that we needed were image link. And I will use underscore to separate the words. Um, as long as you're following the suggestion or the requirement that it can only be numbers, letters, underscores and hyphens. Um, let's go category name, product name. We can probably just do call it category, product name, and then what else? Starting price and then link. Starting price and link. And I could try to uh, upload with an, uh, with an intentional uh, mistake. So for example, if I had starting price with a space, and I try uploading this catalog, it is not going to work. Um, for the sake of time and the duration of this video, I will go ahead and not make any intentional mistakes, but that is just a common way of making a mistake. You know, if there are spaces in your column headers or if you have any repeating column headers or repeating IDs, that is one uh, way the braze can throw errors when creating catalogs. So at this point is I'm gonna take a second to fill in these columns with random uh, images and data that I find online. All right, there I have it, found a uh, found some items online. And by the way, within the cells themselves, so outside of the ID, the ID values, and then the columns, the cells themselves are a little bit more flexible. So you can have spaces, you can have spe special characters. Um, so these are a little bit more forgiving than the column headers and uh, the ID uh, values themselves. So now that I have this CSV that is finished, I'm going to go to File, Download, and Comma Separated Values, and that should save a CSV file in my Chrome browser. Navigate to Data Settings, Catalogs. I'm gonna create new catalog, upload CSV, browse files, and then drop the file that I just uh, downloaded, which should be right here. And then Braze will take a minute to um, process it, and then, a lot of times the error messages will already be thrown if you have issues in your catalog, but it looks like I might be good to go. And there is a step where you choose uh, the data type for each of your columns. And for the most part, um, any links will be a string, any text uh, will be a string, 
Um, but there are times where your starting price, for example, could be a number. There might be columns that are just true and false columns. And then time, especially, um, there are some columns that could be a time. And you want to make sure you're choosing the right uh, data type for each of those columns. Definitely take a second to go through and uh, confirm that each data type is correct. Um, and if you're not sure what data types are, uh, we may have a video for you in the future on uh, what is a string, what is a number, what is a Boolean, and what is a time. For now, let's go ahead and click next step. And then a catalog name is required. So we will call it, once again, this catalog name also cannot have any spaces. So we'll have to call it FNM um, Braze or FNM Retail Catalog. We'll call it that. All right, process catalog. And the UI kind of gets to work. And at first, it might look like nothing's created, but if you refresh or give it a few seconds, maybe refresh one more time. Okay, sometimes I actually end up leaving this page. And then, okay, something went wrong. So we have an issue. Let's take a look. The, there are item values that exceed 5,000 characters. So I don't think any of my item values have over 5,000 characters, but I have a feeling it's this one that's giving me an issue. So I'm going to try to look for a new uh, data example. And this shouldn't be a problem for most of you if you're using real data. I think I'm having issues because I'm trying to find, um, you know, I'm trying to find examples that work on the web. But let's try this one. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. Copy image address, make sure that one's good. Let's replace these two. They were both the same. And I'm gonna try the process one more time from the beginning. Um, brace catalog. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one because I do wanna use FNM retail catalog one more time. So you can't really like update this. You actually can't even click on it. We're gonna just delete it. And then let's try one more time. Create a new catalog. You know, I can actually just drop it right in here. Next step, all strings once again, FNM retail catalog, and then process catalog. Hopefully no errors this time. So this I think still happens where it looks like nothing has generated, but if you refresh, oh, maybe we have another error. Or it might just take a second. Um, so the UI sometimes might be a little bit confusing uh, whether your catalog has been processed or not. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Oh, actually, it looks like it loaded. So click on that. And then there it is, our IDs, all our images, and then our categories. So that is how you create a catalog using a CSV import. And actually, while we're here, I do want to go over how to use the UI to make some updates to the catalog. So I can go to update catalog and I can add a field. Um, so let's say I actually wanted like sale, sale starting date. And that one is actually going to be a time. So I can go ahead and add a field. And then now we should see sale starting date. So let's say there's a column that you forgot to add in your CSV. You can do that in the UI here. You can also delete fields. So let's say I don't want that field. It looks like I can delete that, no problem. And then I can also add an item. So that's instead of adding a column, we're adding a row. So adding an item will give you a field for every single um, column that you have. And notice how the sales starting date, which was a time data type, has a different input than all the rest um, string data types. So that's actually very cool. And then last thing, let's say you want to edit an existing row. This one is hard to find, but you click the eyeball and you can actually delete or edit the item. And then you can make changes to the item directly there. So let's actually, I wanted to add the sale starting date. We're going to start the sale on March 1st. So we'll go ahead and save item. And that should get written there. And then one last thing to note about this. Um, so first of all, the eyeball is a very helpful place to edit your row. But one last thing, notice how I chose March 1st as my sales starting date, but we're seeing February 28th, 4 p.m. Why is that? If you go back to the documentation, scroll down a little bit, it says, Braze processes, processes, processes 
time values based on the dashboard timestamp. For example, if a column has a value of March 13th, and your time zone is in the Pacific zone, this time would be imported to Braze as March 12th, 2024, 5 p.m. And that is because the time, the date that you choose in uh, for Braze, for Braze catalogs, um, this date is ingested as UTC time, which is equivalent to uh, London time, I believe. So March 13th, midnight at UTC time is in fact March 12th, 5 p.m. Pacific time. So uh, that might that explains why there's a little bit of discrepancy with the date that we chose. And you can actually even see if I edit, and it will even say sales starting date uh, in the company time zone, but click edit item, and you will see that the sales starting date is in fact set March 1st. And when you use this value in your campaigns, it'll still say March 1st as well. Um, so that's it for how to create and maybe even update a catalog using both a CSV and the Braze UI. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll actually be using the catalog that we created. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.